Comic Gun. Susie Owens. Voodoo. Zaculino. You're watching Comic TV. TV, your weekly guide to the wacky world of comic books. I'm Mike Rizzo. And I'm Steve Prisbilla. And we try to expand your views on comic book reading and knowledge there with creators, interviews, reviews, previews, all kinds of fun stuff. That's right. We haven't had a convention in quite a while, so we've no, pretty much shame, run shame. out of interviews that we've gotten. It's about time. And we're going to be going to Chicago next month. We'll be catching up on the interviews. We should have enough for... Quite a few months in August, we're going up to Toronto again. They're having another show up there, August 23rd, 24th. And yep. as we get more information on that, we'll provide that to you so and you can attend that because it'll probably be a good show. We too. don't have any interviews, but we can play that nine-part Peter David interview again. For no, a no, no, no. What we're going to do is we're going to... put would be a mini-series. <laughs> mini Peter David mini-series. What we're going to do is we're going to bring you some of the... Since Rob Liefeld's been in the news quite a bit lately, we're going to bring you some of the Rob Liefeld panel discussion from last year's Chicago Comic Con. And speaking of Chicago, we're going to have a little talk about Wizard Magazine. Yes. And what does that have to do with Chicago? That's because they own the Chicago Comic Con. So, let's kick off today's show with the one and only Psycho Steve and his first comic book review. Thank you very much, Mr. Michael. You're welcome. My first one this week, it is special. It is hot. It is great. It's not on the stands yet, though, for you people. Not you. Special. Operation Stormbreaker. $3.95 from Acclaim Comics. Operation Windbreaker? Operation Windbreaker. <laughs> July of this year, it will be coming out. Writer is Mark Wade. Artist is Doogie Brainsworth. And inker is Robin Riggs. Now, one second, let me get it. There's something really neat on this. Instead of me going through my own review, I'm gonna read the back and it is gonna tell you basically the whole story. You're cheating. No, I'm not cheating. There's a reason why. He's got the cliff notes to the comic books. <laughs> cliff notes to the comic book cheat sheets. Mm -hmm. Except we don't cheat off of Michael anymore. World War II, the Nazis are losing, but they have one final desperate plan to win the day, and a soldier powerful enough and crazy enough to carry out such suicidal orders. Six very special warriors are gathered to stop the Teutonic Knights. The Sergeant Turok, Bravado, Nemesis, Jack Rapid, Dr. Tomorrow, and the War Master succeed. The world of valiant heroes will be born. Now, this story deals with a crazy Nazi soldier in a full metal outfit. At first, when I started reading it, <clears throat> I thought it was similar to Iron Man, except there was something really similar about it. Sergeant Turok reminds me of Sergeant Rock, plain and simple. <clears throat> Turok? Turok. Tupac. <laughs> Sergeant Tupac Shakur. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> End of story. One page, all <laughs> done. <laughs> <laughs> but this book was really good. It deals with, like I said, I thought it was Iron Man. It turns out it's a Nazi exo man of war. They come across some powerful crystals, the Nazis. They turn this, this exo war suit into an invincible suit. The soldier they have in there, not realizing that he's doing bad, is dying from radiation poisoning, though. Same with Sergeant Turok. 
It's up to Turok and his whole War Master gang to destroy the soldier. Well, at the end of the story, the soldier realizes he's wrong. He's got to stand up for justice against the Nazis, not for the Nazis. This book was very, very well written. It sort of shows the dark, dark side to Exo Man of War before it became an Exo Man of War, the young universe born. The art is excellent, just like most acclaimed books. Very, very well drawn, sharp, very colorful. I mean, you can actually look at a picture and not even need words and sort of understand what's going on. Collectability, yes. I would say this is definitely a collector's item because this is the kickoff, like they said, to the Valiant Universe. It explains all the uh, characters and who they're going to become. Rating, I give this one a hot, hot, hot. Pick this one up the second it hits the market because it ain't going to be out long. That's Operation Stormbreaker, an Exo Manowar special event. Excellent. Very good. Excellent. Very so good. I guess you liked it. I really liked it a lot. It was, it was, you think they put enough Nazi signs on them though? No, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> it was very good. Very well rated. I liked it so much. Excellent. Well, topping this week's comics news. As always, the news is interesting. Homage Comics announces Terry Moore is taking um, Strangers in Paradise back to Abstract Studios and leaving Homage. <clears throat> The split is an amicable one, with Moore simply decided he wanted to self-publish. Amicable? Yes, amicable. What's amicable? Amicable. Just go on. Oh, okay. Lucas Films has put the Star Wars comics license up for renewal recently. The next Star Wars contract will be up for five years. Ooh. Taking it to the release of the new films with Marvel, DC, Dark Horse, and one of the image imprints asked to make the asked to make a presentation and a bid for the license. Yes. Awarding of the contract is reportedly reportedly to curl occur a curl. I got new lips today, man. I can't do a thing with them. It's reportedly to occur in June and we will keep you up to date on that. And who gets the contract? It's June now, so it should be out any day. I can't see any other company other than Dark Horse doing Well Marvel had it for some time. Yeah, but Marvel you can tell the different artwork in Marvel. Well, you can also see now by us, uh, we just got a shipment of the, uh, Dark Horse Comics and three quarters of their comics right now are Star Wars. And because it's uh, it's still the hottest thing out there right now, except for, of course, the Lost World merchandise, which is blowing across every marketplace now, but Star Wars is still the hottest thing out there. I mean, yeah, I saw every... private parts over the weekend. How was it? Or last weekend, wasn't it? Yeah, last weekend. How was it? Uh, it wasn't bad. Did you see it? No, the comic book is coming out, though. You know, I heard something about some action comic figures too. I don't action know. Action figures doing, in comic book I don't know Howard if doing. Stern. Oh my god. This should be an Do interesting. They make dolls that ugly? <laughs> hey, Howard Stern's a god. He's an ugly god. <laughs> He's DC ugly. Comics regrets to announce that editor Lou Stathis passed away on Sunday, May 4th, after a 10 month battle with brain cancer. He was 44 years old. Lou had a brilliant mind, a razor-sharp wit, and a tenacious spirit, said Karen Berger, executive editor of DC's Vertigo imprint. Stathis began work as an editor at Vertigo in the middle of 1993. And that's all for the Comics TV News. Until later in the show. Your brother got shot, and you're asking me why is it not good for you to go get the person that shot your brother? If you go get the person that shot your brother, does that change the fact that your brother was shot? We need to find a way that we can prevent you going back and retaliating. An eye for an eye, if we did that, everybody's eye would be poked out sooner or later. If I poked you in the eye, and then you poked me in the eye, and I poked you back, we'd all be blind. Is that right? So we need to find other ways to, to get to people so they can understand that carrying guns isn't the solution. Welcome back. Glyph is an interesting collection. They have one of the best publishing company names that I've seen in a long time. It's called Labor of Love. That's what it is if you're an independent publisher. Not you. Oh, sorry. If you're an independent publisher trying to put out a book, it's a labor of love that, just to get this book out. Now, Issue number two is what I'm reviewing here today. This is an anthology that includes some well-known industry people such as Donna Barr, Roberta Gregory, David Lasky, and Shepard Hendricks. That's right, a relative of the one and only Jimmy. There are comics interspersed with text pieces. Some of them are editorials by the many people involved with the book, and others are short stories, while other 
are, uh, are kind of like articles in a magazine. The comics were varied, but for the most part, all of them were of decent quality. There are many fantasy or sci-fi stories and a bunch of other miscellaneous little stories. I have to say, I really enjoyed this book. I wasn't sure. You know, over the years, I've gotten to like anthologies a little bit more. Some of the stories are to be continued, and I look forward to see what will happen. So overall, Glyph, number two, I'm assuming you say Glyph, uh, deserves a hot, and it deserves your attention. At 72 pages, no ads, and magazine format, this $4.95 book is well worth the cash. cash a cash cow. So, why don't we talk about Wizard. We were going to do a dual review today, but Steve forgot. But I forgot the book. <laughs> forgot the book. <laughs> I forgot the book, so there's no dual review, but we have something a little bit better. I'm going to talk about Wizard. Now, we haven't done anything on Wizard in, in quite a while right now. Um, I'd say for almost a year we haven't actually reviewed a Wizard. Well, I picked one up. I picked the new issue up. And I must say, I am impressed with it. June 97, $4.50. Same price. 55 cents. What, what did it used to be? $4.95, it went down to $4.55. Hmm, I wonder why. They must have got more ads. Yeah. And this is issue number 70. Yes. Um, it seems the prices in these books are a lot closer to actual market price than anywhere else. At one time, we had the combo, and what else do we have? The combo's still around. There was a... Overstreet fan. Yeah, a fan. And uh, there was a couple more. When the Comics Buyers Guide puts out, puts out um, a book. But I I'll tell you what, the prices that I've gotten out of here compared to going into a comic shop and looking are so much closer out of Wizard than out of any other book How do you outfit. know, though? Be well, because when I went in and I, I, I went to three different comic shops last week, and I looked at a couple of the books that I had, that what they were going for in here and what they were actually selling them for, and this is the closest that, that, that's been to any of them. I mean, some of them, the prices um, were absolutely outrageous, the, mm -hmm. the, the money they wanted for them. Another thing, Mike just turned to the page, they have a action figure guide, and they got an ad for all the new this McFarlane is, action this figures. This is a company up. called Hangar 18. It's, it's, it's really cool, they've got new uh, spawn uh, dolls coming out, which are really cool because they're 18 inches. They have Malabagia, a new look for Malabagia, too. He's got a sound chip in him. He's got a sound chip in him. Uh, Spawn has blades you snap on, and the Violator has light up eyes. And then you've got like Spawn 8 figures, the new ones coming out. Spawn the I actually that, saw some of the 8s. Yeah, I've seen some at um, Target, has some of the new ones I right think now. I saw Gravedigger. They also have Spawn the Movie dolls over at oh, Target right Spawn now. Spawn the Movie. These are another, oh, she's another version of Spawn, another version of Clown. Yep. Uh, the hamburger Spawn. hamburger Spawn. And also they're re-releasing the Kiss dolls. Now. And, yep, and these are by, these are by McFarlane. Oh, McFarlane. And, I mean, uh, there's a lot of, and they also have like Battlestar Galactica, Star Wars, Star Trek. Uh, Marvel. Marvel. I mean, there is a lot of neat stuff in here. Also, what we are, we're going through is they have a, a section here called Cast and Call, where they, they pick a comic that, that's on page 56. There it is, right there. Uh, they pick a comic and they figure the best people that they could figure out to be characters in this in the movie. And a lot of times what it is is the pictures that they pick, I mean, these people look just, just like them. them. But I also read that they are coming out with Age of Apocalypse movie. They're casting for it. Now, Wizard felt that these people would be the perfect match for him. They got Robert De Niro going as Wolverine, which I think they could have did a little better job as that. Magneto is going by Christopher Lambert, what he looked like in uh, uh, Mortal Kombat. They've got uh, Courtney Cox as Rogue. That's the thing, they pick these people based on some look that they've seen them have before. And some of them look a lot like... Absolutely like what amazing they what they look like. Um, Jimmy Smith is Dr. Sinister. They're gonna have Kurt Russell as Cyclops, which he looks pretty good with his eye patch on from uh, yeah, they're Escape from LA. Exactly. They're basically taking exact pictures and, and matching them up. Uh, another thing they got in the toy chest, they got all the new Batman dolls in there from the movie. And I mean, all in all, this book has gotten a lot better. I really, really like it. Speaking of movies, there's quite a few. Well, the new Batman and Robin is coming out this mm -hmm. summer. Should be out. 
soon. We've got Spawn coming out in August, Spawn movie. The Spawn animated series is on HBO right now, I guess Friday's at midnight. Yep. Um, they're also supposed to come out with a new oh, Steel. Fan. Steel, which Shaq O'Neal is going to be playing. Out, yeah. September, I believe I saw. Um, John Steele. Mm -hmm. uh, they're also supposed to do another Fantastic Four movie. Um, yeah. What else? Uh, there's like two or three more movies that are coming out that they're coming out about comic books, which I think is great. More and more people are getting interested in, in these movie companies are getting interested in comic books understanding that they have huge followings and well they're, they're hoping that they can make some money obviously. yeah and obviously they are now i also did something and i we want your answer on this yes contact us yeah i went up to the uh, gallery mall last week and i interviewed 50 people between kids teenagers and adults that read comics and i asked them what they liked better the old superman costume or the new Superman. Basically, not only the costume, but the way he is. 41 out of 50 of those people liked the old Superman. The super, and believe it or not, the Superman they liked is the one after he came back to life when Doomsday killed him to the present. You mean the one with long hair? The long hair, he was more modernized. They really, really liked him. This new Superman, I, I even think, I, I don't like the, the costume at all. I don't like now that he's got electrical powers. I, oh, really? It sort of ruins it. I, I don't appreciate it. I'm sorry, I just don't appreciate it. There's, they tried making a change. Don't change something that's been around that long. Well, they changed him for that, too. I mean, he was changed there to bring him to that point. Yeah, I mean, his death. It, it, was, it was a great change when they went from the short-haired queen Car 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 Clark, 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 new lips again, Clark Kent, to the long-haired, more modernized, lovey-dovey with Lois Lane type Clark Kent that's married. Well, there might be people that like this change too. They might There's, think that this is a great change and they didn't like the one with the, the long hair. The yeah. nine people that really did like this one said it was time for him to change and, and pick up another power other than just being in, invincible. Speaking of Lois and Clark, yeah, out of here. They're gone. In case, in case you haven't seen. You haven't seen. It's been off since, uh, I think it went. April. April sometime. Beginning of April. Hit me. Food in the mall. They're gone because viewers have dropped. Well. No, viewing stunk. It wasn't that great of a show. No. It was more of a love story. Time slot and uh, whatever it was up against. And you heard that yeah. from our producer, our time slot. The time slot killed him. So, so. and last thing about Wizard here, Garib Seamus here, the, uh, the head honcho publisher, He's got about here about them buying Chicago. Yes, it's official, etc. We already told you about that. Well, these people, I don't know, he's something else. He's trying to make it look like they're trying to do the industry a favor by buying Chicago Comic Con because that way they can bring more diversity to these conventions. Well, come on, these conventions, it's a comic book convention. Comic books and all that other stuff do not mix that well together. Comic mm -hmm. books are comic books. Cards are one thing, toys are another thing. They don't all mesh mm -hmm. together that well. No, you can't have a convention with all of them because you'll, first of all, you're gonna have way too many people because everybody, then you're gonna get arguments. People are here for cards, people are here for toys, people are here for cards. Then you're gonna have uh, overpriced stuff. People are gonna be arguing about prices, how true it is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, we're gone. Not Steve, unfortunately. I can't go, I can't afford it. We'll be there because uh, I should be getting our press kit this week and we'll be set to be there in Chicago for at least two of the three days, possibly three, depending on how well everything is going there. So we'll bring you all the gossip and information we can. We've been talking to people on the net who are going to be there. We'll be meeting those people, getting interviews from a lot of small press people, meeting some of the big guys. Hopefully we'll get in touch with some of those image people or Marvel people that you want to talk to, and we'll get some great interviews and stuff. Yeah. And that's all at the Wizard Chicago Comic Con. Yes, it is. So, Stevie, why don't you do another review? All right, I'm going to do another we'll review. Continue on with today's show. I am doing Turok Time Walker, number one of two, $2.50 from Acclaim Comics. Nachiza Galusi and Yoakum are writer, artist, and inker. In the second part, you have three different people. But this cover is neat because it's a two-parter. The other part matches straight in, so it's a, a poster cover. It's really cool. Galad and the Forever family have been trying to destroy Sabath's 
reign of terror. He's like a super powered creature for thousands and thousands of years. Every time they destroy him, all he does is sleep for a couple hundred years and comes back to life. Well, Galad goes after Sabath, knowing that Sabath is not at its full power yet alone with just some constables, cops. Galad, the forever man, <clears throat> or Galad, the eternal warrior, gets beheaded. I've never thought to this day I would see his head torn off, but he had his head torn off. But, you know, just in case you people are starting to cry, he's not dead. The Forever family retrieved his head and body, <laughs> sewed it back on spinal <laughs> column and nerves, and he should be okay in a couple of weeks. <laughs> Good, then he can still keep the show on ESPN. That, yeah, he can still have that show on ESPN, War Masters Incorporated. No, Galad. Five more. Galad. Five, Five more. Four more. Three more. Come on, you can do it. Pump. Pump. That's him. But um, he has to enlist Time Walker, which I was never crazy about that character. The Forever Family grants Time Walker his powers back because he lost them because he thought he'd be cute and challenged the Forever family and they yanked him. Well, they we gave him his powers back and he went to enlist the help of Tarak to destroy Sabah. But as they travel through time, Sabah is just destroying the earth, like left and right. He got into the lost land where Tarak lives, killed all the dinosaurs, killed I, everything. Then he got into the 1800s, destroyed city after city. People are dead. It's amazing how they don't show how he's destroying them, but you walk into the city in the 1800s and there's bodies hanging from every light pole. I mean, it, it was really graphic, really interesting. It's a very, very graphic book. This should be for adults. The writing was fabulous. It, it kept you well, well interested into the book. The art was fabulous too, but like I said, very, very graphic. Collectability, yes. This is definitely a very, very collectible book. Rating, I give this one a hot. Make sure you try and pick this one up. It is really, really good. Excellent. Glad you liked that one. I loved it. That's two down that you'd like. Yes, it's scary, ain't it? Yes, it is. My next book today is uh, Trinity Angels what is it? number two at $2.50. What's the name of this one? Trinity Angels. It's a new book from Acclaim Comics. It stars three sisters. Trey sisters. Trey sisters. Who suddenly awake to find they have costumes, looks, and powers. Not unlike the way I wake every morning. There are a group of ghouls out to get them before they realize what their powers are and how to use them. Milk does a body good. Apparently, the Trinity Gems, Milk and Galad. Apparently, the Trinity <laughs> Gems are the cause of this newfound power. The art is great, makes reading the book worthwhile. The story is somewhat amusing, playing off some of the natural super female stereotypes such as enlarged breasts and high heels. Trinity Angels is not a bad book on its own, but when you look at comics as a whole, there's not much there's not much new here. It's just another bunch of beautiful people being chased by bad guys. Now, I mean, you see that in like 95% of the comics out there. It's a decent read, but it's not worth running out and getting. That's all I can say about that one. But, for another quick review, I've got Strange Haven number five. This is a continuing excellent storyline. We learn more about Meg and Janie. She really opens up to Alex this time. Uh, Too bad he doesn't feel the same. Definitely worth reading if you like real life comics. The reason Mike feels so enthusiastic wearing a costume every morning, he ends up wearing his wife's nighty every day. So, that's why you're dancing around. Yeah, I wish it to you. Nothing, I peep. Okay. Okay. Begin the next news article. Okay. As announced a few weeks back, Creative Force Productions has announced they will be closing as of September 31st, 1997. The company is closing for non-financial reasons. Noted among the reasons for closing, CFD President Joe Monks stressed the uh, confusion with the now defunct Cry for Dawn Productions brought into the light recently when a counterfeit Cry for Dawn number one surfaced. The new company will be called Chanting Monk Studios and will include some new talent and staff. Chanting natives. Oh, Chanting Monks. Oh. Buy our CD, 1995. Yes. 
Sirius Entertainment has announced a new title called Scary Godmother by the one and only redhead Jill Thompson. The first volume in this all-ages Halloween adventure is expected for September release. Each issue will be fully painted, painted and released each Halloween through 1999. It's slated to be a book that adults and kids will enjoy. Sirius plans on giving it the biggest marketing push of any of their titles to date. Look for Scary God and Mother this September from Sirius. And that's it for the comic TV news this week. Serious Godmother? Yes, it's a very serious oh, Godmother. Okay. Okay, Stevie. Okay. Go on, do another review. Now, I'm going to do another review. Why don't you do another one? This one. Justice League America number 9 and 10 from DC Comics. Writer is Grant Morrison, and the artist and anchor is various in the next two issues. $2.95. This is a preview book. This is not a regular book. This one is going to be released July 2nd. Keys to Dreams. Lex Luthor is trying to destroy Justice League America. This has been going on for 20 years already. Well, this time he almost has them. He gets the Key Master to put all the Justice League characters into a dreamscape to basically rely on their worst fears and their worst nightmares. He almost actually destroys all of them until Batman actually realizes what's going on and talks into him. Sort of like Flash realizes what if the whole world had his superpowers. Everybody could travel at light speed and he was the only slowest person on Earth. He'd be crazy. That, yeah, well, they showed that. They showed people hitting intersections and just, you know, and, and it was up to him to try and save them, but he couldn't even keep up with their speed. And uh, Green Arrow, as a younger kid, worrying about what if he couldn't hit his targets? He couldn't shoot right. I mean, it was, it was really, really good. Superman, now this is where I was talking about Superman. They show Superman with his old costume on and his new costume. Watch for them to change it back. Don't be surprised if by the end of the year, Superman's back to his old costume. Back to his old tricks. Uh, back to his old tricks. Something happens, he'll lose his static electricity. Somebody will throw bounce into the dryer and <laughs> pull all his static electricity off of him. The writing in this was excellent. Very energetic and exciting. It explains everything from, from the beginning to the end. It explains each of the characters and why they're there. They are well drawn, a lot of detail, but questions do arise about Superman if he is going to go back. There's even questions in here about Superman, why he's changed. Batman asks him, are you dreaming? He's talking to him with his old costume, and then he sees the new costume. And Are you dreaming this costume or what? Try and grab reality. Collectability, I would have to say only if you're a Justice League America collector. I wouldn't exactly have to run out and pick this one up, even though it is a very good book. I think this would just be a basic. But rating, there you go. Three hot books this week. I'm giving this one a hot, hot, hot. If you have a band, if you have music you'd like us to play here on Comics TV, please send it to um. us. <laughs> please be sure to watch Comics TV on ISP TV. Every week. Comics. Comics. Yeah, okay. Comics TV. Hey, hey, hey. I'm Michael Joe. <laughs> and I'm Steve Priscilla. And we're looking at the wrong camera. And we're looking at the wrong camera. But hey, hey, hey. Okay. P.O. Box 220, Buffalo, New York, 14225. Send your stuff here. Questions, answers, don't forget to visit the website. Yes. Localnet.com slash squiggly. Comics TV. Check us out. Look for us. Yes. Uh, uh. And as I say each and every week, when you patronize that local comic shop, to get them books to me and Mike. Like the look. Make sure you tell them you've seen it on Comics TV. TV.